As Jordan, still in Flint, Michigan. Uh, we are at the five-year mark, just past five years yesterday of the ongoing water crisis. As you know, we've been working on a documentary about uh, some really shady uh, activities by the government here, including uh, basically cheating on the water testing here in Flint for over two years. And uh, they did that by running residents' water lines right before taking lead and copper samples, which the media doesn't cover, but uh, when you do that, it flushes out uh, the lead, so you get a lower number. And then residents like Amanda uh, get a slip in the mail saying no lead. And uh, we've interviewed you before, and that's basically what happened. Uh, you could re-explain it quick, but you had a Department of Environmental Quality official come randomly, and he was testing your water in front of you and uh, let it run for a little bit. Yeah, he did. I let it run and then took a sample, and so that's how you gotta do it. And uh, I mean, you didn't. Why would you think anything of it? So you, he's just—he's an official from the environmental agency. Yeah, I don't think nothing of it. I'm just like, okay, here, welcome into my home, and yeah, do what and, you gotta do. And you're in the documentary, uh, so he let it run. I don't know, thirty seconds, a minute. About a minute. Yeah. Okay. So takes the sample, then you start testing it yourself that myself, way. The same way. You didn't. You probably didn't know, but you were actually on the official state testing program. It was yeah, called. I didn't know that until you said something. I yeah. Think when you showed up. Yeah, we found, we were able to track down the list of homes that were on this test, and the Sentinel testing was basically this large group of homes started out like over a thousand, then then six hundred fifty, then under I think under two hundred, but these were the homes mm -hmm. that they were going to continue testing over several rounds. It ended up being. T 2016, 2017, some of 2018. So these were the homes that were kind of like the, the mission accomplished testing group. Like these are the homes the state environmental agency cited uh, to the EPA to say Flint's meeting EPA regulations. But what's interesting, and I just learned this today from you. So the test that DEQ, the official came and ran, mm -hmm. came back no lead. No lead, high then, in copper. High in copper. Then the ones you ran yourself, because actually residents were supposed to be doing the testing uh, not state officials. The state official coming to run your water was actually, according to the EPA, the state was supposed to drop the testing kit off for you to do, not do it themselves. So that's one violation right there on top of illegally testing her water. So you you then do it following the directions. So you ran it for how long yourself? Uh, I don't know, at least a minute. I know that the water had, wasn't still either because I didn't tell the kids not to flush or do nothing they right. just oh they just you know did what they did every day so i was just like oh just run it get it and be mm -hmm. done and sit outside and they'll come take it yeah which so, is sometimes they want to come you take it for like two or three days right so you your kids use the water in the morning uh in the morning like normal yeah. you ran it for like what minute 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 two minutes i don't know just okay. i had it running and was doing other things and i was like oh okay i'll just take and it and then now. you put took the sample so your, the results for that was also no lead. No lead, high in copper. Right. So I didn't know this, uh, but your husband... My husband did one, and I didn't know that until he watched your documentary. And he's like, Amanda, I did do it once, and it came back with copper, or not copper. It was high in copper, always high in copper, but then it had lead. And I was like, which one? He's like, the one I did. And I set it outside. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know you ran one. And he's like, yeah, I did. And one, when he tested it. When he tested it, it came back with lead. But when he tested it. <clears throat> he didn't run it. Nothing. He did it when everyone was asleep. And it's been, you know, first thing in the brand new morning before he knew anybody did anything. So he just so did it. of your home, DEQ came. Mm -hmm. They ran the water. Yep. They get no lead. You do it because he said do it the exact That's way I did it. You, no get no, you get no lead. Your husband does it. The proper way. Right. <laughs> And I got to talk to him, but you, from what you remember, it was low. It was like two parts It was like two. It wasn't that high because even when I called the guy for you to try to get the results, any results that he had, he said that there was one that had lead in it. And I was like, what? Well, I don't remember seeing that one. And he's like, and then that's the last time I talked to him. I was like, because I asked him, could I get that one? No. But the thing is, and this is interesting. So, okay, they say the EPA's limit is 15 parts per billion. So they claim anything under 15 parts per billion is technically safe to drink and consume. However, they are saying that with a filter, with a filter, 
So yeah. they and we didn't have a filter until I mean I think what was this two thousand eighteen? Probably the end of two thousand seventeen or when they started coming around with the plumbers. Right. Um so, so basically you because the results said no lead, no lead and the ones you did and DEQ did and because the one your husband did was low, uh, you went back to drinking it, but without a filter. Well, I mean, we always had been drinking it because we couldn't put a filter on there. We couldn't do, there's nothing we could have done. I right. mean, we got bottled water, but honestly, that bottle of water was only going so far. Right. But because it said no lead. But because it said no lead, we just kept just doing it. We're just like, uh. And your husband it's not didn't us. think not to drink that you couldn't go back to drinking without a filter because it was low. Yeah. Right. So. But it was kind of this, it's really interesting because it is another example of the difference between the flush testing they were doing. And then his test. I right. was just like, it always came back in high in copper, which I didn't. And, by, and by the way, he could have done, done it the right way. And that morning it shows up at two parts per billion. But lead is, you know, the accumulation is different every single day. So different times of the day too. So when he did it, might show up at two parts per billion. Could have done it the right way another day. It shows up at four parts per billion. It, it just fluctuates. So what's, what I guess what I'm saying is like, I always be clear not to do cause and effect. We're not doctors. But you went back to drinking without a filter because most of the tests said no lead. And one of those tests said lead. So you were basically drinking for probably a year mm -hmm. water with lead, according to them, yeah. low amounts, but still without a filter, you're still consuming lead. Yeah. Yeah. And to like remind you, <laughs> to remind the audience, uh, that you had kidney spots. Uh, then they found spots on your thyroid. Yep. Then mm -hmm. they diagnosed it. Thyroid as, cancer. Right. Which like, is they diagnosed a thyroid cancer, but could be afflicting from kidneys and or lungs. But the, Oncologists thought more likely the kidneys than mm -hmm. the lungs because I'm not a smoker, so. Right. So let's talk about you got the one lobe. One thyroid lobe taken out, still waiting on surgery, possibly in the next week or two for the mm -hmm. next round of surgeries where they'll open my whole neck up and take out that thyroid and the lymph nodes attached. So the, the cancer you had mentioned spread from the thyroid to, to my lymph nodes so now i have lymphoma lymphoma so it's worse than it originally was because lovely healthcare. <laughs> what about uh what about your kidneys uh my kidneys are still i was really sick for a whole i think a month a month i was just straight peeing blood and they weren't sure what was going on that's why they did the kidney biopsy was like we gotta figure out if that's in your kidneys or if it started in your kidneys and we just didn't do nothing about it so what uh what did the kidney biopsy show nothing it just showed an abnormal just it was an abnormal growth on it for some reason they don't know but not cancer not cancer okay there so essentially what you have here is a perfectly healthy woman. Yeah, you were fine. you were thirty four, I think. Uh, thirty, yeah, thirty four. I yeah. just turned thirty five in August. So. Okay, so twenty fourteen, they switched the water. Other than like normal stuff, you really never had a medical problem. No, uh, never. You start drinking the water. I mean, you're still always, continue drinking the right. water, cooking with the water, bathing with the water. So from April twenty fourteen all the way to really the end of twenty sixteen, yeah, you were drinking it. Your kids were drinking it. And really, the testing, the, we're talking DEQ's tests, the two or how many did you do yourself? I did, they did one, and I did at least three or, or four myself. And then my husband did one, and I continued to keep doing them. Okay. Every time they were so the overwhelming majority of the tests done at this house were done the wrong way. One mm. by DEQ, the other one's by you because they told you to do it the wrong way. And just only one time my husband did it because it was a spare of a moment, moment and he was just wanted to get out of the way. So what does it say to you that... This guy came into your house from your state. You pay for his salary. He intentionally d tested the wrong way. I say intentionally because DEQ, the Department of Environmental Quality's own YouTube video, says do not flush before sampling. They knew what they were doing. He yeah, and then they taught the poor core people probably the wrong way to do it too because I heard that they told them to do it that way. And it's like, what the freak? Like, it's not... So... It come, basically, he's coming in and knowingly in front of you, manipulating the testing. Then they're giving you false sense of security. Yeah. I mean, 
you know, certain individuals will watch and say, well, so what? You know, the one test that came back with lead was low, two parts per billion. But that's a corrosion control level. That's not a public health level. Yeah, so, but I mean, I'm pretty sure lead was always in there because we needed a new water heater. And that was brand new when we moved in. We've been here for five years. That was a brand new water heater when we moved in. Mm -hmm. So why did we need a new water heater? Yeah, you know, water heaters don't don't go just bad in, go bad in like less than five years. That right. don't make sense. And okay, so let's talk about the health insurance component because this kind of goes into the national discussion. So you're you're a sick woman. <clears throat> we don't know what caused what, but we do know you weren't sick before oh, the water no. switch, and you were kicked off your health insurance in the middle of this. Yep, right what? in the middle. Why like I cried like when I found out. He's making too much money, and so they're like, you have to go get on the open market exchange. Well, if anybody's been on the open market exchange... Obamacare. Yeah, the Obamacare. It's, if I can say it, it's shit. It's just literally shit. Like, I would have probably had to take out a loan to pay for anything that I would have needed. They wanted almost $16,000 just between me and my husband. That's not including the kids. The kids will keep getting health insurance because they were poisoned. A sixteen thousand dollar deductible. Oh yeah. Oh. Yep. It was eight grand for me and eight grand for him. And I'm not gonna lie, I lied on there to get a cheaper rate because it asked if you were sick, if you had any known health conditions. Of course, I have known health conditions. I have freaking cancer. I have a thyroid problem. I take thyroid medicine. I have to get blood work every. At the time it was every three months. It's interesting because it's supposed to be pre-existing conditions. Mm, free, yeah, pre-existing conditions, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. No, they wanted. I think we ended up having to still pay out of pocket one hundred and fifty dollars a month for insurance that we weren't using. And then the government paid like a four hundred, five hundred, mm -hmm. I think it was. Wow, and you, so you were off health insurance so you couldn't continue no nope, couldn't continue treatment couldn't continue up with the medications that i was supposed to be on and if anybody has thyroid problems you can just send yourself even sicker not taking thyroid medication at one point i was down 20 25 pounds back up 25 pounds when next week it fluctuated wow. so much i was like oh my god i slept day night day and night and you got I'd, three kids yeah i would only wake up to take them the youngest one and the oldest one to school. My middle one gets homeschooled and I just throw her on the computer and I was like, okay, I'm going to go lay down. Like, my energy just started coming back. I have been able to do what I was normally doing because I'm back on my medication, back on doing what I have to do. But but you were only able to get back on the medication because you got on, which is... <clears throat> Genesee County Health Plan. Which you didn't know about at first. I did not know, no. I didn't know anything. When the DHS lady kicked us off... She didn't tell us nothing. She didn't say, there's another plan you can get on to get help. She just said, get on Obamacare. Well, that wasn't going to help nothing. I would have to go borrow money from my husband's family, who probably doesn't have money, mm -hmm. to get... Because I know my dad doesn't have money to help me. He can barely help himself, like, mm -hmm. you know? And let me ask you, I'm just curious... What did you think after watching the documentary? Because I think a lot of people, it's hard to explain to people in a way that it's like, oh, uh, what we found, because it's, it's, te it's a technical thing. You know, it's water testing and this and that. But I hope uh, from the documentary it shows in plain yeah, English. I wish my husband was here because then he can show you. He showers in this every single day. And he's been getting, he's just always getting rashes. And still. Still. Still today, still. He showers every day. I try not to shower every day. I at least shower every other day and try not to be in there. I just get in and out. And, but, he, you know, he's a big guy, so he showers every day. And he gets just these sores on his body. And it's like... And this is what the media is saying, that it's it's not a actual water issue anymore. It's a trust issue. You hear no, this? I'm in pretty sure it's still a water issue. I mean, I still don't trust. I don't trust our mayor. I don't trust our... Well, I mean, I don't know. The govern governor's new, so I didn't trust the last governor. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't really trust anybody. <laughs> well, it's interesting because the last governor says a year ago he called the water, quote, restored. Mm, okay. Yet your husband's getting... Still getting rashes. Other people we've met are getting rashes. 
hair loss. We've spoken with people who have nosebleeds, not to mention the autoimmune. Yeah, my new haircut isn't due because of chemo or nothing like that. I mean, it is because I was sick and had chemo. But I was trying to grow it back, kept trying to grow it back. But every time, I just fall out when I take a shower. Still? Still. And I haven't been on chemo for a while. So it's not because of that. So I would shower. Then I start getting bald spots. Like I'm still on some type of chemo. It's like, no, I can't. My hair's not growing back. Even my husband knows. I like, your hair's just falling out. So this little peach fuzz that you have, like, can't even grow it back. Because it's, every time I wash it, just. Mm-hmm. So what does it say to you when you see, you see what we found, you see like in visuals what we found? What it's does like it say? Everyone's story is the same thing. How, how are all these people that I've never met, they never met me, we all have the same exact story that someone came in our house, turned on the water and took the sample and then said, hey, this is how you got to do it. Like, I don't know those people in the documentary. Me and my husband said the same thing. Did you guys just all court together somehow? I'm like, no, Jordan just showed up to the house one day and I didn't know. Like, I was just literally going to slam the door on your face. I'm like, okay. It's happened before. I mean, honestly, you've seen the sign on my door. It just says, honestly, I don't want people here. But you know what's interesting, and I'd like your thoughts on this. Uh, we were just talking about it in the car. You know, every I don't think once I've... Uh, told a resident about this, which is sad that like we have to inform the residents. We're handing out flyers. Hey, the water testing was cheating. They cheated because the Flint Journal here doesn't do it. The Detroit Free Press doesn't do it. I mean, there's really, if you want to call it media here, but they're basically just puppets, puppets and stenographers. They don't actually do any investigations. They just regurgitate what the state says, what the EPA says. And as you see in our documentary, uh, the state, either through intentional, uh, ma- you know, ma- malicious intent or just gross idiocy and negligence, maybe both, cheated. So they got manipulated testing. But every time we mention this to someone, no Flint resident we speak to is shocked at all. It's kind of like... not shocking at all. It's just, honestly, if you look at the other side of towns where the college center is and everything, it's just like they want all these old people to go away and people that don't have any money to just to go somewhere else. And so that they can do what? So they can do whatever they want. So they can tear down the houses or build new colleges, build more room for the college students. I'm not saying like Mott and them hasn't done anything good for Flint, but honestly, they want to make this not known for what it was known for before, which it was for the cars and stuff. And now they want it to be known as a college town. Like, it's going to be great. Like Maybe they'll fix the water when all of you leave. And Yeah, like, we'll all leave, and then they'll just be like, oh, finally all of those people are gone. Like, let's make sure we take care of the newer, the college students, make sure they're not poisoned. You know, God forbid their parents are paying a lot of money for them to go to college here. Mm-hmm. So. And talk about a typical day. I mean, I don't want to upset you, but... Uh, it spreads to your lymph nodes, you said. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you, what's a day like for you? I mean, every day is different, but... Every day is different. That one time I text message, I was in severe amount of pain because I decided my house needed to be cleaned. You know, my husband works. I can't be like, oh, you work 12 hours. Can you please clean the house now? Like, mm-hmm. no. It's very painful. And as you can tell, my, my throat is raw because there's something on in the throat that's just pressing against the vocal cords Mm -hmm. it's you know it's every day is painful i don't want to cry but it's very painful for me and it's upsetting to me because i'm used to taking care of her you know my son just asked me today can you give me a ride like no i'm just too tired Mm -hmm. i can't you know and i picked her up early from school today because i'm like i'm just gonna be too tired later to do it Mm -hmm. it's just you know and we can't go to the bottled water places, so we just buy our own, even though we have a filter. Well, but if there's, if bottled, there's water. bottled water left, too. My dad was watching the news, and he's like, look, there's one down the street. I'm like, yeah, but by the time I get in my car, I feel like going. What's the point? Yeah, it runs out. Or, I mean, we were here last year. There was like three, four-hour lines. Yeah. To get. Just to get water. Yeah. It's sad. But, I mean, we can afford to. Three, four dollars a case. You know, mm-hmm. two cases is like four dollars. Right. But still, it's 
We had enough filters for after my neighbor moved out. She gave me all our filters, so we had enough mm-hmm. to last us a long time. And what about um, your mental health? I mean, mm-hmm. you're, you're cold up in the house all the time. You're yeah. young. You're 36. No, can't go out because, you know, germs. So I can't do nothing fun with her. Like, just before I was diagnosed with more cancer, I finally got out of the house and took her to that jump place on Miller Road, but... No, I've been inside all winter. I haven't went outside. I haven't to grocery shop. Thank God, Walmart's got that thing where they just come out to your car and just put it in there. Mm. Like I'd rather just be in the store getting my kids their food and my husband his things, but no, I will just use the Walmart app and have them bring it out to my car. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm like they look at me and it's like you're young. Why aren't you inside shopping? You know, it's like I wish I could be inside shopping.